Hi, I'm Suzette Allen, and I'm here in a campground in Santa Cruz with Bubble Trailer with Johnny. And uh, we just took a picture night before last with light painting of Bubble Trailer here in the Redwoods. And it turned out so good. I just wanted to share with you how we did it. So I photographed it with a Lumix G9 and the lens I'm using is a seven to 14 mil millimeter rectilinear lens, which is gorgeous. I love it. If you're shooting a full frame camera, it would be equivalent to a 14 to 28. So we set this up on our MiPhoto tripod. Um, I wanted a wide enough scene so that I could do a banner on my Facebook page, of course, but I also wanted a circular image so we can put it on bubble trailer with the rest of the circles. And so I kind of wanted it pretty wide. I also wanted to make sure that it had a little bit of sky, the blue sky. So we did it right at dusk before it gets black, black, because I wanted the trees to stand out from the sky and we wanted that deep blue. So let's see, we started off with ISO 200. We wanted each exposure to be a good 10 seconds long, so we had time to paint the trees, right? So at 200 ISO and 10 seconds, we experimented and figured out about F7.1 was where the aperture needed to be. So we did our base exposure. Of course, we turned all the lights on inside the trailer, so it's coming out of the windows, had our little lantern, and we did our base exposure, which um, didn't have any other light in it, just what was there. Then we did one with this little flashlight, kind of far away, just a kind of a misting of light to light up the trailer. We don't need much light with this white reflective surface, so that was just a little light. Then we used our big flashlight, and this one was great for painting the trees because this one is focusable, and so you can get a really powerful beam all the way up into the tops of the trees so you can get a more dramatic lit look. And so for each exposure, we did about, um, or we did like this side of the tree and the next exposure was that side of the tree. And we did above the trailer and to the left. And um, we just would review and say, okay, what part is left that's dark? After we built all the, the scene up, we realized the ground was dark. She was just floating in blackness. So we had to make sure to get the ground. So basically we took a flashlight down low and just skimmed the ground from both sides just to kind of rim light and give her something to be sitting on. So turned out really good. Um, then all that was left was to take all those images and put them together in layers in Photoshop. So let me show you how we did that composite. So I downloaded all my files and separated out the images that we did of the whole light painting project. And I put them in a separate folder just to make it simple. So my folder is called combo and I have eight images. So what I did is I select the first one and the last one. So all eight of them are selected. Then I go up to tools, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. So when I click that, it's gonna take all eight of those images and put them into one document, all as eight different layers. It works really easy. I'm just sitting here waiting for it to finish. Oh, there it is, it's finished. So I've got eight images and here is what's so amazing. Since I did that all on a tripod, they're all perfectly aligned. I don't have to align them. So all I need to do is select the top layer, hold shift, select the bottom layer. So I have all eight of them selected. Then I go to edit auto blend layers. I'm gonna choose stack images and seamless tones and colors. It doesn't hurt to click content aware fill transparent areas, even though there aren't any this time. And I'm just gonna click okay. Only takes a few minutes to build it up and then we are ready to take a look at the amazing capability of Photoshop because this is the easy way to do it. Photoshop does it for you, but I'm gonna show you another way also. So here we go. Here is the finished image. Check this out. So it puts a merged image at the very top and let's just turn off all these layers and show you. Here's the bottom and the next, next, next and it put all of these images together to make this beautiful light painted shot. I think that's amazing, and most of the time, this is all you need to do. Now, let me show you a little trick, though, to help make this easier, because I can see two problems right over here 
where I was light painting and my flashlight was in the shot, you can see the tip of the flashlight. There's two of them actually. So here's how I fixed that problem. So I'm just gonna go back in my history to before I stitched all these together and I'm gonna find out where the problem layers are. So it's this very bottom layer has, has this uh, flashlight mark. So I'm using my eraser tool at 100% and I'm just erasing a hole and I'm, gonna, I'm erasing the hole over here. Then I'm just gonna go through these. None of these really have a problem in them until we get to the top. Look at that, that's the really big one. So on the, on the top layer, I am going to erase that hole. And I'm not too worried about those little holes because it's going to fix it. So I'm gonna go back to selecting the top layer, hold shift, select the bottom layer, go to edit, auto blend layers again, stack images. And this time I definitely need content aware fill transparent areas in case those holes show up. Then I'm gonna say, okay, it's gonna do the same thing so quickly. And then we'll see how much better it looks. All right, so take a look at that. Look at that, that's perfect. So now it fixed those two areas where the flashlight marks are. And all that needs to be done now is just clean up maybe the number on the tree and a few little distractions. So that's the easy way. Now I ended up doing this manually and it has a different look, kind of a moody look. So look at the difference between the automated version and this is my hand done version. So that's before and after. I like the moodiness of the one that I did by hand. So let me show you kind of how I did that, okay? A little bit longer, but it's nice to know how to do it in case you want to do something specific and take the time to do it just the way you want. So from this image, let's just um, turn off all the layers and let's take a look at how we built this. So the bottom image is kind of the base image with a little light at the front of the trailer. So here's the full layer. I didn't like the light over to the right or the ground lit up on the left. So basically I put a mask on it and I cut holes in there and I just put a layer below, which is black. So there is my base image. Then I put the next layer, layer on top and I just wanted a little bit of light at the top of the trailer and the sky, of course, is a little bit bluer and brighter then because it was an earlier exposure. Then I added on another layer and there's a lot more light up here in the trees. Let me take the mask off. So this is what the image looked like before the mask and that's with it. So you can see all I used was this little bit of the trailer. There we go. Then we go to the next one. All I needed on this one was the tree. So if I turn off all the other layers, you can see that's all I needed is I put on the layer, I put the black mask on, and then I just painted with white to make that tree show up. Then I added on the next one, which is the other side of the tree. I added on the next layer, which is the upper part of the tree. I added on the next layer, which is the far left tree. And the next layer, which is the right-hand side of the far left tree. Then we've got the light on the ground here in the front and a little bit more light on the front of the trailer. And each layer, I just added it on until I built up the look that I wanted. It takes a little bit more time, of course. Now when I'm done and I'm happy with the way it looks, I do a stamp visible. So a stamp visible layer is a composite of all those layers. Now I don't want to flatten it because I might need to go back and modify it. So stamp visible, the key is shift option command E or on a Mac is shift alt control E. Hold all three of those and then it will take all the layers that are visible, merge them all together, make a copy and stick it on the top of the stack. So that composite layer is the one that I can do the masking on and any corrective cloning or whatever to make it just the final image. So that allows me to use that to cover up all those bits and pieces below. 
Then at the very end, I just added a little bit more saturation and a little bit of text. Because it was cropped loosely, I did my banner for the um, Facebook, and I also was able to do a perfect circle, and that's gonna go on the side of Bubble Trailer. So before I end this video, I do wanna go back and show you exactly how I took that layered file and manually added in those masks, because I want you to be able to do this yourself. So I'm just gonna take this image back to the place where we started, where I let Bridge build the multi-layered document for me. I selected all the layers. I went to Tools, Make Photoshop Layered File. We'll go from there and I'll show you how I did each layer. Okay, so I've got the document here and um, I've, I can show you that I've done a few layers, but this is how I did it, one layer at a time. Photoshop built all this for me with all the layers stacked and they're all aligned. And what I need to do is what I, I'll turn them all off and I'll just do it one layer at a time going from the bottom. So I've done the first three layers, first four layers, and I'll turn on the next one. So as I turn the visibility on, I can see that's the one with the tree over to the right, the right hand side of it. So that looks really good. I only need part of that. So what I'll do is turn on that layer first, then I add the layer mask by clicking the black square with the white circle. So the mask starts out white like that. Now I don't want it all showing, I want it to start out black because I only want to paint on part of it. So with the mask selected, you can see the little white square around it. I go up to Image Adjustments Invert. Here's a shortcut, Command I. So notice my white mask is now black. So that means the whole layer is hidden. Then I can go to my paintbrush and I'm gonna choose a big soft brush like this 300 soft, 300 soft pixel brush. I'm gonna choose white as my color. I'm gonna click this to choose white as my color and I'm gonna paint at 100%. Let me make my brush just a little bigger with brackets and then I can paint on the area that I want. Now, obviously I just painted too much because now my trailer's black. This is why we do masking. I'm gonna hit X to switch it back to black and I'm gonna take that off. So, and I don't want it quite so bright out here. So that looks better, but it seems a little bit strong. So what I'm gonna do is take my opacity down to say 50% and paint it in, paint it away just 50% because I just want a little bit. So there we go. And if I want to see it without the mask for a second, I hold shift to disable the mask and I can review what's in that layer. Oh, you know what? I kind of like the trees up here in the top. So we will make sure we paint with white. I hit X to make my white. And then at 50% white, I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of detail up in these trees. So that one looks great. Let's go to the next layer. We turn it on. That's the one with the right hand side of that tree. I think I want some of that too. So again, on that layer, we'll add a mask. We'll invert it, which is Command or Control I. Now it's black. Go back to my brush and let's just start at 50% in white and let's just start painting. Oh, there's the right hand side of that tree. That looks better. And this little bush right next to it. That looks good. Now to see if there's anything else in that file I want to use, I'm going to hold shift to click on the mask so I can see with and without. I'm thinking that looks marvelous. Next, I go to the next layer. I turn it on. Oh, that's the other tree, tree way over to the left. So we're gonna use that one more time. We're going to add on our mask. We're gonna invert the mask. We're gonna choose a brush and then we'll just paint over here and bring in as much tree as I want. Now, if I paint it 100%, it's full strength. And of course, anytime I wanna back it off, I just switch over to black and take it away. So that's how I built up this image manually. I'll turn on each layer, see what's there, put on the mask, invert it, and paint on the part that I want. But that gave me so much more control and it had kind of a moody feel to it and plus it was really fun to do. So I hope that inspired you to try some light painting and I uh, hope that helped you 
strengthen your Photoshop skills as well. Masking is pretty powerful. So thanks for tuning in with Create with Suzette. If you're really interested in light painting, look up John Hartman online. He has marvelous classes and you can learn so much more from him. He's a true inspiration.